Hi all and welcome to this video financial modeling blog tutorial. Today we're going to talk about CFADS and debt service coverage ratio. So if you haven't already done so, please stop the video and read through the blog on www.videofinancialmodeling.com. If you have, we're going to take you through the examples presented in that blog. Okay, so the first question says, find the cash flow available for debt service based on the following inputs. So as we described in the blog post, a simple definition of CFADS is revenue, less expenses, less capital expenditure, less tax, and then plus or minus working capital movements. Okay, we've thrown a, a trick in here. We've got a non-cash charge here, which is depreciation, so we don't include that in our CFADS. So let's just type out CFADS, and let's go equals sum of these. So we don't include the depreciation there. Okay, so if you've got an answer of 18, you'd be correct. The next example says, it, well, it's related to debt service coverage ratio. It says, based on the following information, find the debt service coverage ratio for each period individually and also using a look back of two periods. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do in this example is we're gonna find the debt service. And as we said on our blog post, the debt service is usually principal plus interest. Sometimes it includes other financing fees as well, but the simple definition is senior debt, interest and principal. So let's sum those, so equals sum of interest and principal. Let's copy that across. So if you wanna copy using your mouse, just grab the right bottom. If you don't, you can shift across, 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 and control R to copy that across. Okay, so now we're gonna find the debt service coverage ratio for individual period. Okay, so what we said is the debt service coverage ratio is simply the CFADS divided by the debt service. Okay, so equals, we're just gonna scroll up there or you can select it using your mouse. The CFADS, so the cash flow available for debt service divided by the debt service. Okay, and then we're just gonna go up to the home and we're gonna put a couple of decimal places to that. Okay, and copy it right, so control R to copy that right, and then we have the debt service to coverage ratio for each individual period. Now what you'll notice here is that we do dip under a debt service coverage ratio of one for a period. Now that's because our debt service is greater than our CFATs. So in this event, we would have a cash shortfall and we'd probably be in default as well because the default debt service coverage ratio is usually around 1.05. Okay, let's now find the debt service coverage ratio for a look back of two periods. Okay, so with this one, we can only start it here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go equals, so CFADS, sum, sum those, and look back two periods, okay? So we'll include the current period and also the period before. Now, it depends on the definition, but a look back could also be the previous two periods, so period zero and one. Um, so that's the CFADS, and then we divide it by the sum of the debt service over the equivalent period. Okay, so let's go enter and let's copy that across. Okay, so there all the debt service coverage ratios are over one, usually well over one. The minimum's here. Now you'll notice that that minimum is, as I said, greater than one, which is interesting because 
in this period we have a cash shortfall. So what that look back ratio is doing is it's covering that cash shortfall. So it might not be apparent if you're using debt service coverage ratios that are look backs whether you've got a cash shortfall or not. You should always include a cash balance check or cash shortfall check in your models. Okay, we hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.